I would like to invite Healthy Land and Water Chair Stephen Robertson and CEO Julie McLellan to provide an update on Healthy Land and Water. So she's got a, Julie has got a presentation, so I'll hand over to them. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, thanks very much, Partha. Um, thanks, Stephen. Um, I think uh, I can speak probably loud enough for everyone to hear. Yeah. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as you know, I'm the incredibly proud uh, chair of Healthy Land and Water, and I'd like to start out by recognising the tremendous work uh, that SECMA does and the role in providing guidance and advice over so many years, 2022 included. As the official natural resource management group of Southeast Queensland, ensuring we, we are tapped into the communities across our region is essential to being able to do the best job we can to protect and enhance our beautiful region. It is having the voice of our communities, businesses and individuals that has made us one of the most impactful and influential environmental groups in the state. And having just returned from the NRMRA Knowledge Conference in Western Australia this year, can I also add in nationally. As, a proud Southeast, as proud Southeast Queenslanders, we are fortunate to live in a place of such remarkable be natural beauty and tremendous environmental significance. We are home to one of the most biodiverse and beautiful areas in Australia, we all know that. But we're also home to several international recognised uh, areas which have been listed as Ramsar and UNESCO sites of significance and protection. But as you know, our footprint is also one of the most is, is one in one of the most populated regions in Queensland, with more people blocking here every day. We're also one of the most climate change exposed regions as the weather this week in parts of Southeast Queensland uh, certainly reminds us of that fact. Ensuring the region's ongoing sustainable livability and prosperity depends on the health of our natural assets, which is what we're talking, what brings us together um, about today. On behalf of my board, I'd like to thank you for all of your contributions that you've made via Sec SECMA and by extension, Healthy Land and Water throughout 2022. SECMA is a powerful network and the team of Healthy Land and Water is keen to work even more closely with you in the coming year uh, towards our shared vision of realising the best outcomes we can collectively uh, to achieve for our region. Now, can I just apologise from a pad staccato today? I'm actually more one-eyed than I usually yeah. am. Um, well, we've been we have been in overdrive this year, juggling our fast growing programs, as well as keeping up with the skyrocketing demand for providing thought leadership regionally, nationally, and even internationally. Experts from our team are increasingly being called upon to headline at a variety of events and forums and contribute to publications, give independent science backed advice to decision and policy makers. On top of this, our team has been tirelessly working to catch up on on extended delays in in its pro, pro in its program of on ground works caused by COVID restrictions followed by the considerable additional workload which comes with providing support and recovery works following the disaster scale flooding in the first half of 2022. Our response to this year's flooding was rapid and comprehensive. Government agencies reached out to Healthy Land and Water even before the floodwaters had started to recede, seeking our advice on scale and damage. Our rapid assessment online flood tool enabled Southeast Queenslanders to add geolocated photo evidence of flood impacts straight from their phones, even before the waters went down, and it was safe to dispatch our team to complete official assessments. This enabled us to provide continued intel as the situation unfolded 
which was key to the government being able to stand up its disaster recovery funding response as quickly as possible. 30th of June this year marked the end of our strategic plan or our five year strategic plan. As our team reported on the organisation's progress against the plan, I've been really pleased to note the strong progress towards our aspirations set some five years ago to support the health of our region. We've had a whirlwind year of extensive consultations with our many stakeholders over the past 12 months to set the purpose and direction for the coming five years. To meet the needs of our changing region, we've been called on to take an even a stronger role in, cre in creating a healthier, more resilient and livable region. As a consequence, our new strategic plan is much bolder, taking a definitive step from supporting to leading change. And Julie will touch on uh, this new direction a little more in her um, in her report uh, following my, following me. I'd say that the strength and influence of healthy land and water is thanks to the leadership of a team of forward thinking partners who band together to fund this vital work for the region each year. We understand that our next big challenge will be how to scale up this incredible work to build a healthier, more resilient region in the face of our growing population, development pressures, and managing our changing climate and the extremes of weather on the cards as a result. Together with my colleagues on the board, we would like to recognise the commit commitment, support and advice of our many advisory committees. Every year, hundreds of people volunteer their time to be on our, on our guiding committees. And some of these committees include our Risk and Audit Committee, Indigenous Engagement Strategy Committee, our Science Committee and Monitoring and Evaluation Steering Committee and Associated Expert Panels, along with the critical community perspective provided by the South East Queensland Catchment Members Association. It is through this broad collaboration and input that our organisation continues to deliver evidence-based action for the benefit of South East Queensland and beyond.